Hi guys and welcome to my latest video. Now I have something unusual for my channel today and it's integrated amplifier. I hope I'm going to start doing these in the future. And um, for today we have NAD or NAD, I don't know how you pronounce it in your country, D3020V2. And it's one of the latest NAD budget offerings you can see it's pretty small, that's because it's actually class D amplifier. And when it comes to NAD, I'm somewhat um, nostalgic, I could say, because my first amplifier ever in early 2000s, 2002, 3, 4, was actually NAD C320BEE. I paired that with Bowers and Wilkins speakers, I was so happy with it, but it was a typical class AB amp, it was much chunkier, and um, later when I actually started changing gear and uh, realizing different sound signatures, I uh, actually realized that the NAD had this warm and full-bodied presentation that's not necessarily the most revealing one, but it was really, really pleasant and engaging nonetheless. So today we are going to talk about modern NAD, class D, smaller one, and then quickly going to lead you through its features, its connectivity, and of course how it sounds. So let's start. And first of all, I wanted to mention the build quality itself. It's completely made out of plastic. It feels quite heavy for, for this small thing, but it is plasticky. If you knock on it, if you press it a little bit harder, you'll notice it. It's not a big deal, of course. Once it's put in its place, I don't care about materials that much. There is a glossy part there is a mate finish part and be careful, you might see this on, on camera, I'm not sure, this is a second hand unit. It's not that old because this is not an old amp but it already has signs of wear and tear because this mate finish here for example it looks like it has a deep scratch but it's not. I don't know how it got there, it's just signs of use. So it's not really that durable, it will not keep looking as new for prolonged period of times. So if you're a person that cares about that, then you need to take a little bit of extra care with this NAD. Maybe put some rubber uh, pads down there when you put it on your shelf and move it left and right, because after some time marks of just usage will start to appear on this body. Other than that, it's really nice, it's compact, it's functional. And most interesting things actually happen on the back panel. You can see it's very busy here because it's a small unit. I don't know, it's like 20 centimeters wide. And in that small space, we have speaker binding posts, we have a pair of RCA analog inputs. Then we have digital inputs, both optical and coaxial. There is no USB one. We have a phono input too. That's for, that's for turntables. Those are trendy for some time now again. And then we have these pre-out and subwoofer out, which is really commendable to, to have in such a small package. But, uh, here there's my first complaint about this amp. I personally like to use bare speaker wires because that definitely provides the best possible sound quality. And if I don't have to, I avoid using any sort of spades or connectors and things like that. But if I actually put bare speaker wires here, here, and then here, here, it goes from left and right, then I actually blocked my analog RCA inputs and it's so cramped, there, I just couldn't do that. So I had to revert to using banana plugs. That's something to be aware of. If a device is this small and this compact, some sacrifices 
have to be made. Also, having just one pair of RCA line inputs means that you are limited to only one analog uh, line level source. For example, CD player or external DAC or radio tuner or DVD player or Blu-ray Blu player. You can choose one of these and the turntable. If you need to connect more devices, then I guess this amp is not really for you, right? Now that said, let's move to the front. It's pretty simple, really. You have a volume knob and uh, actually, if you want to operate it from the unit directly, there are some touch sensitive buttons on this side. For example, this is a power on and I'm just trying to activate it. Oh, actually it's, uh, yeah, it just turned on. And next to it, there is a source select, again, touch sensitive button. And pressing this one, you're actually choosing the input. All of this you can do much more easily by using the remote control. The, the remote is really small, it looks like a toy, it's plastic again, but it's very functional. And you can of course select source with it, change the volume, but you can also dim the front display. I don't know if I'm doing anything right now. I really appreciate that function because I usually listen to my music in the dimmed room, in a dimmed environment. And you can also, there is a one button called bass. Now it's not adjustable in any way. You just press that bass button and this unit will provide a little bit more bassy sound. But that function is really subtle. It's not just making everything go wild with the bass and some sort of boom and vroom happening. It just increases the bass response a little bit. And I would say this is for a bass heads only because even without it, uh, NAD D3020 V2 provides plenty of bass response in my, in my opinion. So that actually leads me to the next part and that's its sound quality. How does this little unit sound? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I have to be honest with you. I expected some sort of uptight and slightly dryish sound because they moved to class D amplifications. And um, that, that, that tends to happen when you're actually using a very, very cheap class D amps like very affordable toppings or SMSLs, things like that. But with this NAD, it's the completely opposite thing. First thing that I noticed when I plugged it into my system, and I first tested just its amplification section. So I connected it to several different external DACs into this analog input, and I tested its amplification section. And I noticed it sounded very bold. It sounded very dynamic and weighty. Uh, every tone has a really decent weight behind it and a really strong body. And uh, I was like, wow, this is nice. And next I started listening and I noticed that uh, dynamically speaking, this amp is really great. When a big swing is needed, it will provide. It paints the picture with broad strokes. And I know it says like 30 watts uh, per channel, but they never felt like lacking any drive or power. I connected it with several different speakers and it even pushed my fairly lazy Cath LS 50s with a really respectable drive. Again, there was a lot of punch there. There was a lot of body weight and, and just tone richness. But that leads me to the next thing. This amp is not the most detailed. It's not the most snappy and quick sounding amp. If you want something that is really fast paced sounding, that has a great skill and subtlety with micro details and, and it just stings like a bee with great precision, this is not it. As I mentioned, this NAD, it's, it's like a jackhammer. 
it strikes hard, it's punchy, it's engaging, but it does that in broad strokes. But if you're after microdynamics and, and small, quick turns and something that can go easily through any curve, it's probably not this amp. And as you probably guessed already, this means that tonally, this amp is warm and rich. It's definitely not analytical, it's definitely not quick or speedy or anything like that. But don't get me wrong here, please. It's not that warm to actually be sluggish. It's just as I explained, it does things in broad strokes. And in my experience, a lot of people really like that. Oh, but I mustn't forget this part. Even though it's warm and dynamic and weighty sounding, it's not actually too sweet. It's not like overly honey glazed when it comes to details, because tone texture is quite pronounced. So you do have that authority, you do have that boldness and that punchiness. You don't get the most quick and nimble sound, but you do get a lot of tone texture. And that's a really nice combination, and it's really pleasant to listen to for a longer periods of time. And there are certainly amps in this price category that can offer more details and more subtlety. I don't know, like Marantz PM6005, uh, 6006, or some Cambridge, something like that. But it's on you to decide what do you really want. Do you want something that's snappy and fast, or do you want something that actually authoritative and like jackhammering through your music? NAD does that. Next, I've decided to check its digital inputs. So I got rid of all of my external decks. I connected my streamer directly to the coaxial SPDIF input on this amplifier. And what I heard was generally the same sound character, but even warmer. And to be perfectly honest, with even less speed and quickiness from the sound. Some details got lost. Compared to any decent deck, like for example, I don't know, Topping E30 or LogSG D30, those are up to 200 bucks good value decks. Compared to them, the integrated digital DA converter inside of this amp sounds warmer, sounds more closed and less detailed. Like, extension on both sides is a little bit compromised. Highest frequencies are not all that extended, and lowest frequencies do not go deep. What you do get, you get that, again, very warm, very rich presentation, very bold, but compared to what I was talking about before, when I actually tested it with external decks, you lose a little bit of that texture, you lose a little bit of details, everything becomes even more warmer and like mid-bass and mid-range centric. And in my opinion, those digital inputs are good enough for people who use digital sources only occasionally. Maybe they use CD player as their main source, maybe turntable or something else, but they use digital inputs to just occasionally listen to the music from their PC, maybe YouTube or something like that. But if you are like me and you stream music most of the time and you uh, value your digital files and your streaming services and that's your main music source, then I don't think that digital section in this amp is a good final solution. But I do think it's good enough to bridge until you get something better. For example, you're just creating a system, you bought this amp, you bought speakers, you already have everything you need to start enjoying your music. But sometimes down the road, when your budget recovers, 
you get a little bit better external DAC, you hook it to this one pair of analog inputs and you definitely get a better sound quality with more texture, with more details and with better extension to both bass region and high frequency region. And that's actually good. This NAD will give you everything uh, needed to get you started. If it's your first hi-fi system, that's really important to, to just relieve uh, the strain on your budget. But I really don't feel that this digital section is good enough to be your final solution if digital files and digital streaming is your main source of music. Finally, I have to say I didn't test its phono input. I don't own any turntables. I don't plan to do that. And this leads me to the last part and that's pairing. So if you decide to get this little amp, what should you think about in terms of speakers? And for that, I would definitely suggest you to think about speakers that are naturally a little bit quicker and speedy sounding. For example, think about monitor audio or DALI speakers, something like that, something that's quick, resolving and nimble, because that would match really well with this bold, rich, but somewhat slower nature of, th of this NAD. If you go towards mid-bass heavy speaker, if you go towards the speaker that's already heavy and slower sounding, it might be just a little bit too much of that thing going on. Maybe some of you would like that, but I don't think most of you would. I can imagine, for example, Wharfdale speakers I like them, they sound lush, they're mid-range centric, they're a little bit tame up top, but combined with this NAD, I don't know, maybe you would like it, but be cautious about that. Because you might end up with something that's just not resolving enough, especially up top, and it just sounds too thick in the mid-bass and mid-range. So in the end, what I really and honestly think about this little amplifier, first of all, I think that uh, switching to class D didn't change the sound signature that NAD is known for. It sounds as rich, bold and like warm as I remember my AB class NAD from like 20 years ago sounding. And finally, would I recommend this to a friend? Well, it really depends. If you're a fan of that type of sound signature, that like bold and weighty and authoritative sound, that is not the most subtle one, that is not the most resolving one in the class, then I would say go for it. If you have speakers that you feel sound a little bit lean, then I would say go for it. If you like its connectivity and it's really rich when it comes to connectivity and you don't need more than one analog line level input, then I would say go for it. But if something that I mentioned during this review sounded like a deal breaker to you, then it's not for you. And that's okay, that's perfectly fine. But all in all, this is a really decent, like versatile integrated amplifier. And I suppose it will make a lot of people happy, especially in a type of entry level system and matched with speakers that will complement its own sound signature. Now that would be all for today guys. If you liked the video, please click that button. If you really, really like this channel, then consider becoming a patron and see you next time. Bye.